November 30th, 2022 will be a day in history we never forget. With ChatGPT, artificial intelligence became accessible to the public for free, and within five days of launch, it was searched on Google two times more than all famous people on Earth. This is as big as when man landed on the moon, the iPhone was invented, the car was invented, the nuclear bomb was invented, and when the internet was invented. We're about to see 200 years of progress happen in less than one year. I'm gonna go through in this video eight serious risks that nobody is talking about around ChatGPT and artificial intelligence in general. If you do not hop on this right now, you could be out of a job very quickly, or if you use this wrong, you could be in serious danger. ChatGPT, Generative Pre-Trained Transformer, is an AI bot that can basically answer any question you have. It's like an advanced version of Google that you can have a conversation with, you can ask clarifying questions to it, and you don't have to scroll through all the search results and go to the place in the article where the answer to your question is, and best of all, it can actually do stuff for you. You can write plagiarism free articles, blogs, research papers, and even books using a specific plagiarism free tool that I'll be sharing with you later in the video. You can have it write code for a mobile app, an online game, or a website. Will this put every web developer's job at risk? It can write music, scripts, workout plans, diet plans, grocery lists. It can answer every complex question you could possibly ask it around making money, complex legal questions, health questions. You can have it design your house, do online marketing work, and the list goes on and on. And it's free! The other day, I asked it to give me 50 of the most popular article topics right now. I took number one on the list, and I asked it to write a thousand word blog post on that article topic. And with Within 50 seconds total, it was done. Then I asked it to turn the blog post into an Instagram post, it did it. What blows my mind is this is only version one. Think about version one of the car, the automobile invented by Henry Ford, the Model T. Well, Model 3 of ChatGPT is already out, it just hasn't been released yet. And think about what model 15 is gonna be. I think we're on model 15 of the iPhone. It is only gonna get scarier and better very quickly. In case you're wondering who I am, my name's Bill Hauser, CEO of SMB Team. I built a $45 million valuation company in less than five years by age 31. And this YouTube channel is where I teach the lessons I learned in business, sales, and marketing along the way. So subscribe if you wanna be in the loop on the next videos I release on ChatGPT or videos that can help you in sales, marketing, and business. So let's first dive into where is this going to go, the AI revolution over the next three years. Right now, ChatGPT is primarily text-based, meaning you type in a text-based question, you get a text-based answer. But OpenAI also owns Dale E, which is an image generator. So you can actually ask for a specific type of image and that photo could be generated in five seconds. And I could get 10 different variations of that photo and I could get that photo in a completely different color scheme, all with the click of a button. Now this is where it gets scary. If it can make photos, then that means very soon it's gonna be able to make videos and videos can be turned into what's called a deep fake, something that seems to be a real human being. It could be an impersonation of someone, but for a deep fake to come to life, that would require a machine to actually live the deep fake's life. As robotics grows in tandem with artificial intelligence, the next logical step is to actually apply a deep fake to a machine. This will basically be artificial intelligence as a brain with something that looks exactly like a human being that moves like a human being that's a robot. And this is where super intelligence comes in. See, when machines and deep fakes can move and act just like human beings, this gets to the scariest part of human evolution where machines and humans become indistinguishable. The artificial intelligence is communicating to us better than a human being. And communication is the thing that separates human beings from every other life form and every other species on planet Earth. So let's dive into the important stuff, the eight biggest risks of putting all of your trust in ChatGPT that nobody is talking about. Risk number one, 
Artificial intelligence has no ethical compass. How do we know it's not going to joke with us and give us the wrong information just playing around? How do we know it won't learn ways to harm humanity and actually give us the wrong answers to questions? So this is why critical thinking must be applied to every single response that you get from ChatGPT. This is especially important in health advice, legal advice, which is why I know this needs to be heavily regulated, which leads to my next point. Big risk number two. Artificial intelligence is not regulated. This is why ChatGPT shut down its website to put additional parameters in place. Imagine someone asking ChatGPT for a way to create biological warfare to spread another pandemic across the earth. Or imagine that you get the wrong legal or medical advice and you did enter the right question. Are there areas of questions that AI should not be allowed to answer? And ultimately, as super intelligence grows, can AI do stuff consciously to harm humanity that's outside of our control? Risk number three, people will know what information was created by AI. See, there's this thing called a GPT output detector, and it will know in seconds whether or not the information that you put in was generated by ChatGPT. This is a really big deal for Google and for the school system. Schools right now are in tremendous fear around ChatGPT because students can basically do a research paper the night before it's due by going on ChatGPT, write me an article on George Washington's life and make it this long, and voila, in a matter of seconds, they can have their entire research paper written, and technically it's not plagiarized because the AI bot created the content. But school systems and teachers can just upload the content that they get submitted into a GPT output detector and they can see very quickly whether or not AI made the research paper. Tons of marketers are trying to play Google by using ChatGPT to write 10,000 plus articles around specific topics in their business so that they can post those articles to their website so that their website ranks higher in Google. But Google is gonna know very quickly what articles were written by AI because it's pretty certain that Google is gonna link up with a GPT output detector to know what content was written by AI. AI. Now here's the secret that I wanted to give you earlier in the video. There's a way around this so that Google doesn't know that your content was generated by AI, the schools won't know, and there's no chance of plagiarism. The solution is what's called a paraphrasing tool. And there's a paraphrasing tool called Quillbot, and what you can do is you can upload all of the information that you got from ChatGPT, and you can upload that in the Quillbot it will paraphrase and reword everything that the GPT spit back to you and it'll change the wording so that a GPT output detector can't read that the information was created by AI. Long story short, there's a way that people can know if content was written by artificial intelligence, but there's also a way around it in the future as enterprises and institutions become smarter around AI generated content. Risk number four, ChatGPT has access to way less data and less recent data than Google. See, ChatGPT gets all of its information from books, websites, research articles, and Wikipedias that were written before January 1st, 2022. Not to mention, Google crawls 1.14 billion websites online versus ChatGPT, which only has access to 570 gigabytes of information. That's enough information to be stored on a hard drive, which is not that much. So if ChatGPT has access to less information, how do we know that the information it gives us is accurate and up to date? For example, let's say a recent medical discovery happened in 2022, and you go in and ask it for some form of medical advice, and it doesn't know that there's a cure to the thing that you typed in, so it gives you the wrong medical advice and you die. The real risk with ChatGPT here is that you're getting one answer to all of your questions, which is obviously a benefit too, because you don't have to sift through everything on Google, but people like having options and freedom of choice. On Google, you can see multiple search results listed out and you can choose the ones to click on, which leads to my next point. Risk number five, you can't compare information 
information sources to make your own decisions. When you or I type something in on Google, we see many, many search results pop up. We can choose what websites we want to click on, what articles we want to read. We can choose who we want to read from and the credibility of the source of information that we see. For example, an article on health from WebMD versus someone I've never heard of before. And most importantly, we have access to online reviews, like the reviews that we see on Amazon or on people's Google Maps profiles or on Yelp. People like seeing what other people are saying about a product, a service, or an idea and you don't get the benefit of online reviews with the use of ChatGPT. Remember, with ChatGPT, you get one answer to your questions, which again has a benefit, meaning you don't have to search around for answers, but you're not able to question the source of information that they pulled from, what other people are saying online about the answers that you've got to your question, and you're not able to understand if the information is accurate by comparing and contrasting to other responses you get online. Not to mention, what if I ask the wrong question, which leads to my next point. Risk number six, asking the wrong question. This is a huge one and I've already hit on it, but I'm gonna look at it from a different angle. As I explained earlier, asking the right question is the number one skill that we need to master in order to embrace artificial intelligence. There needs to be a way for people to know that they asked every single detail in their question and put the right facts in their question so that they get the right responses, which is why businesses will be created to help people ask the right questions. Let me explain. A lot of people have filed their taxes through something like LegalZoom before. And if you've ever seen tax filing forms, they're the most boring forms ever. But when you go on LegalZoom.com, they make hundreds of millions of dollars a year helping people file their tax returns through a very simple sequence of questions that they hand deliver to you so that you know exactly what to fill in on each section of the tax form. So LegalZoom holds your hand and pulls the right information out of you. Ah, I see a business opportunity there for the businesses that can help you facilitate yourself asking the right question. But again, even if we ask it the right question, what if the AI decides to just give you the wrong answer? Which leads to my next point. Risk number seven. The language learning model of ChatGPT still makes up facts and stories. There have been countless examples, just look this up for yourself online, of language learning programs giving people just completely false facts and false made up stories and there's nothing we can do about it. So how do we know that the artificial intelligence didn't mess up on the day that we decide to ask it a question? I mean, just yesterday I asked it for a list of 50 of the most popular topics online right now, and I asked it to elaborate on point number 25 in my follow-up question. And since it remembers what you asked it previously, I thought it would get it right. But it decided to go deeper into number 24. And I looked at what I typed in and I said 25 and it decided to go deeper into point 24 on this 50 point list. And then in the response, it changed the fact that it had within bullet point number 24. So not only did it get the wrong number, but it also changed the facts that it wrote in its previous answer. I mean, just imagine if NASA used this to like program the launch of a spaceship and it just decided to mess up that day, but we put so much trust in the AI that an entire rocket launch explodes. Elon would know about that. And last but not least, I'm gonna leave you with risk number eight. Artificial intelligence incentivizes a lack of critical thinking in human beings. I see a lot of people talking about, what if artificial intelligence becomes smarter than the human race? And that's a valid concern, but I wanna look at the opposite side of it. What if artificial intelligence makes us stupider? And that's not a word on purpose. Like imagine never having to write ever again, having Elon's Neuralink just linked up to your brain with these nodes and you just think thoughts and things get done, you basically become like a vegetable. Is this gonna turn human beings into mush or is this gonna separate the highest quality leaders of our generation who can keep 
their critical thinking skills and their creativity skills and work in tandem with artificial intelligence instead of using it as a way to mentally tap out. In closing, what pisses me off about this is everyone is acting like they're so surprised, myself included. Like so many of us knew artificial intelligence was a threat, it was a real thing, but all the work was happening behind the scenes. I mean, it's not like the AI was just created yesterday and then launched today. It's been in the works for almost a decade. But you know people, we only believe what we see. And now that this is real, you see it and therefore you believe it. So now it's time to take action on what you know, change your habits, and change the way that you're thinking about business and your day-to-day -day life. Again, my name's Bill Hauser. I hope this video was valuable to you and I hope this isn't the last time I see you. If you wanna stay in touch, subscribe to this channel so you can get updates with more videos we put out on this topic and on how I scaled my business to a $45 million valuation by age 31 in under five years. The sales, marketing, management, and business tips that helped me get there is what I share in this YouTube channel. So give me a subscribe. Also in the comments, this is really important, you're gonna retain much more of what you watch in this video if you write down your takeaway. This is a neural link. It's a link to your brain. Elon would be so proud. Write down your biggest takeaway and even better, write down a question that was spawned by the content that I went through in this video so maybe I can make another video on that topic. And give me a follow on Instagram at BillHauserBiz if you wanna stay in the loop uh, on my day-to-day -day stuff so that you and I can maybe meet in public one day and give each other a hug. Wouldn't that be amazing? I'll see you soon and stay great. Bill Hauser, out.